done our job. We've done what we can do. This is it. This is literally all we can do. Because without you helping us, without you knocking on a door, without you telling a friend, without you liking sharing, donating your time and treasure to this effort, without you, none of this works. None of this happens. That is the no. So that's what I need from you right now. I need to hear, are you willing to do those things? Are you ready to take action? Are you ready to get it done? these people so they can support you. Yes! Now do it. Get out there. Like, share, donate, volunteer, knock on a door, tell a friend, spread the word because yes is here and we're going to fix this city and we're going to do it together. All right. Thank you everybody. Yes! I say yes to Vancouver. I say yes to our city. I say yes to our community and I say yes to my neighbors. And I think it is the best way to love thy neighbor um, is to find ways and means to support each other, to build more community, to fix housing, <laughs> to build all the infrastructure that has been uh, uh, failing us. I, I think we can do better and I think we can do better together. Wow. It's infectious. You can't, you can't say no to yes. It feels good yes. and you know it is the answer to a lot of our prayers. When we say yes, it's when we are ready to say yes that's when things get better so you know what I feel that it's been great and I know that right now here in Vancouver people are ready to say yes and uh, you know what thanks for the great people that have been watching the show for all your support it's been amazing and all the people that are here tonight and you know we've been it's pretty profound to start a new party it's pretty profound to start a new party and have the momentum and to be where we're at in this whole thing and to be here and see people saying yes the way that they are I'm telling you history's being made it's amazing yes and uh, I think I'm crazy saying yes to yes because uh, uh, everybody would say that, hey, you're supposed to be neutral, but uh, I don't know. I can't say no. I have to say yes. You can't, you can't say no to yes. You have to say yes. Well, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity, and, you know, we, we appreciate the Cup of Iron support and all the wonderful people. And, you know, if it wasn't for Virginia, the family who's over there, love those guys, uh, you know what? We have built a party and a uh, movement based on middle-class working people again and you can't say no to that and so you know it's so important couple of couple by them Pinoy power it's time to get out it's time to make your voice heard you're the fastest growing demographic in the city of Vancouver for the last five years and you're a powerhouse and it's your time and you know what it is a great great moment in Vancouver's history and you're gonna be a part of it you're gonna make it happen and I'm just honored to be a part of it uh, when the Yes brand came out, when we did this, it was one of my first instructions to the team was is that we needed to make sure that when you looked at this, it didn't look like politics. We are operating on a plan that was brought forward in 1927. 1927. It's a 91-year-old plan that we're operating on. And it was ba based off the ideas of a guy named Harlan Bartholomew, who was a racist. He believed that uh, white people and other people should be separated. And that's the way that they built the city. Now, years later, what has happened is that it's not so much about racial segregation as it is about economic segregation. That 76% of our land, 76% of our land is exclusive, excluded excluding middle-class families. It does not allow working people to plant a flag, make a fresh start, and create a community in 76% of our city. So that is really important to understand why Let's Fix Housing matters, why housing costs are so expensive. It is not because of foreign investment or money laundering or all this kind of stuff on the internet. You cannot blame Chinese people for this problem. That is not an answer it's not Canadian and it's not who we are and we need to reject it and we need to say yes to fixing not who we are but how we do things and that's so critical so a new citywide plan is going to build more housing more middle-class housing for working families in Vancouver it's going to make sure that community centers libraries and public spaces and parks are back at the center of our communities and it's going to make sure that families seniors kids are going to be the character of our neighborhoods, not just a spindle on a porch or uh, the slope of a roof. Well, we were promised that homelessness was going to be um, eradicated in Vancouver several years ago. And we've had plans and promises and apologies and then resets and then more apologies and more plans. I live downtown. 
with my wife and our two kids. I don't have a car because I'm lucky enough I live close enough to work and I walk to work. And I live on Burrard Street and one of the more annoying things about living on Burrard Street is that the only thing I hear at 17 floors up is supercars going by. But when I go down to the street level and when I walk to work, I see people sleeping there. Something is broken. We as Canadians have big hearts. And I know our couple of have big hearts. And I know we don't leave, believe in leaving people behind. And you know what, for whatever reason, some people find themselves in that situation. But we cannot dis discriminate against someone because they're having a rough time. Everybody deserves love, everybody deserves compassion. That's what we're taught. And I believe that, that we can deliver that. And we're going to deliver that by delivering no barrier housing. And what that means, is uh, it's a type of housing for people with mental health issues uh, who have been on the streets for a long time, who've had a long way, they've got a lot of healing to do to get back into a sort of a day-to-day -day comfortable place. And it meets them where they're at, and it gives them stability. But Vision Vancouver and the Vancouver that we know today has been saying no to this type of housing. When I was the assistant to the minister responsible for housing, I was trying to spend $20 million in this city, and we were being told no. And that was because of politics. That was because the current regime in City Hall didn't like the regime in Victoria. Now, I'm not necessarily a big fan of the regime that's in Victoria right now. But I am willing to work with them. I'm willing to work with anyone. And I will work with anyone, stand on any stage. I will hold any, let go arm in arm with anyone. If you're willing to work with me, I'm willing to work with you. But I won't need to wait for you. Because unlike the current mayor, I don't need to wait for the federal government or the provincial government or anybody else to come in and manage this city. We have $355 billion of mortgage-free equity. That means $355 billion of untapped wealth that's trapped in our dirt. And if we unleash that, if we unleash that, we can house people. We can build schools. We can build community centers. We can build public transit. We can build a thriving, vibrant economy. And we can do that now. And I don't need to wait for anybody to do it. The four pillars prior to the current regime managing Vancouver was actually working. We had actually cut opiate overdose deaths in half. It, there were wonderful programs working that were defunded on day one of the Vision Vancouver government because they were NPA plans. They were plans of Philip Owen. Now I believe, and I created this party along with this wonderful group of individuals on four principles. And that we were gonna take the good ideas, that we were gonna bring people together, and that we were gonna stop playing politics, and we are gonna get the job done. So we are going to make sure that we're doing the four principles and that makes sure that we're, we're focusing on not just harm reduction but we're, and policing as we're doing right now, but we're also going to focus on the education piece of things. And that's really critical. So we need to make sure that people, and the fourth really is about a sense of community, that people need a sense of belonging. But that comes down to planning. What we've been doing and the reason why you know people talk about the downtown east side and it's been getting worse, but let's remember also, I've been doing ride-alongs with our VPD and our first responders in Vancouver, and you know what they're finding? They're finding lawyers, accountants, other professionals slumped over their desks in the morning because, you know what, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that feel unfulfilled and they turn towards drugs. And right now we've got a poison in our drugs. It's not just doing drugs like it was maybe 20 years ago. This fentanyl and carfentanyl stuff is so, so toxic and it's so dangerous. And, you know, Tom Petty, the famous musician, he died of a fentanyl overdose by accident. Prince, fentanyl overdose. So this stuff is killing superstars and it's killing everyday people on the street. And it's a tough, tough problem. But well, I'll tell you this. No barrier housing plays a role in this. We've got to get people stabilized. We've got to make sure that we're building community centers in our community for people that with lived experience, as they're called, or people that are uh, drug users, and, and create a sense of community. Because the thing is, is that when people are using drugs alone, they die. And so places like Insight, while not everyone necessarily understands their value, they are really critical. Safe injection sites are critical, and places that are safe for people to go to and feel comfortable in using at this moment in time is really critical because when you're using alone, and if anybody is watching this at home and if you have a drug problem, or I don't want to call it a problem, it's, it's everybody goes through a time. And I want you to know, if you're watching this and if, and if you find yourself from time to time using drugs, even just once in a while, I heard a story the other day of, uh, of a guy I know who's... Um, uh, this kid grew up in his home, 25 years old, uh, successful career, was just experimenting on the weekend and had an overdose. And I want you to know, don't use alone. Don't use alone and know that there's help. 
but know right now that there's some poison out there and that this is not funny and that this is not a joke and that you can't take it lightly and that it is going to happen to you. And so I, I think that message is important. But the final piece of it is, is that we need to make sure that beyond community, that we're also getting a clean source of drugs in the near term, in the downtown side in particular. And I had it was a long journey for me to be able to say that now because that is not my intuition. I am not the guy that's going to go out there and say that I think that the government needs to make, make sure that people are getting drugs. But in this crisis, where we will lose 400 people this year on our streets, just in the city of Vancouver, we need to act, and we need to act now. And so there is a program that's, uh, that we're con contemplating at the city of Vancouver right now that could get people a clean source of drugs in the near term. And it's just a stopgap measure. And keep in mind, it's just about stopping people from dying. And it's about getting them through a continuum of care. But we need to stop the deaths. And so this is a big, big challenge for all of us. And I just think that people need to be looking out for one another right now. And you need to take this seriously because this poison is everywhere. And even if you don't use regularly, even if you're not someone that uses all the time, it can get you. My grandfather who served in the Canadian Armed Forces for 30 years used to always say, Hector, you're either at the table or you're on it. So functionally, you either make a decision for your family or somebody else is going to make that decision for you and that's what your vote means and you get what you don't vote for right and you go out there and uh, you're, you're left without a voice and so I think it's really critical that people get out there and say yes and I think that this election is exciting because the normal political dynamic is really broken up I think there's a real opportunity for change you can feel it in the ener this energy in the air you can feel that there's this opportunity for this breakthrough and you know we had polling come out just like this past week and it shows that you know we're well, actually maybe it was even today it was, uh, it was charging forward you know we've we've gone from eighth to second uh, and you know we've only just started and uh, so we've only really been officially a party for about a month and so you can see that we are ready to lead I have five small business leaders that are running with me for City Council and they are great leaders uh, they are eclectic they are humble servant leaders that I know that are not just social climbers looking to be famous because they want to be on City Council these are people that are dedicated they're ready to do the work they're ready to get the job done and this is for the first time I think in many many decades that the government of Vancouver the city of Vancouver the mayor of Vancouver is not just trying to get the job but they're there to do the job and I think that's something you can vote for. You can Hector you you're can awesome stand. thank you well no, you're awesome thank you thank you for all that you do for the community and your leadership and thank you for all for watching and you know what it's, it's time for the couple buy-in to show their Panoi power and it's time to say Mabuhai Vancouver Mabuhai Vancouver Right. Mabuhai, yes, yes. Vancouver. <laughs> yes, Mabuhai. <laughs>